All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I really wanted to break down my favorite free agency signing that the New York Jets have made so far. Okay, now we've obviously passed the first couple waves of free agency back in March. We know what the draft class looks like. We've seen a couple summer, right, late summer additions to this Jets squad as well. And I think right now we all have a pretty good idea, pretty good understanding of where the team currently stands, uh, how they're looking at every single position here. So before we dive in, I quickly wanted to say... Please drop your favorite free agency signings down below in the comment section. I really want to see where everybody kind of stands on this. Um, you know, are, do you favor the offense, the defense? Who do you think is going to be the most impactful? All that kind of stuff. I would love to hear it because it's going to be really cool to just get everybody's opinion out there together. And then we could all just kind of check them all out at the same time. But for me, I got to be honest, for me, I think my favorite free... And by the way, this isn't including trades. So Chuck Clark, Aaron Rodgers, this is purely looking at free agents i think for me my favorite free agency signing so far also one of the more underrated ones defensive tackle from the seattle seahawks quentin jefferson at six foot four 291 jefferson is 30 years old he's a veteran he spent time with three different organizations started with the seattle seahawks then signed a one-year contract with the buffalo bills then a short deal with the raiders and then last season back with the seahawks where he had the best year of his career Okay, I think Quentin Jefferson sliding into this Jeff Ulbrich scheme, this Robert Sala scheme, is going to do a ton. It's going to do a ton for the defense. I think before we ask the question, who is, you know, the best, which, which free agency signing is going to be the most impactful, we have to take a look at the players lost. And obviously with the Jets, they lost Nathan Shepard and Sheldon Rankins at that interior defensive tackle position. So for me, it was imperative to not only just get a run stuff from the building, which they ended up doing later on with Al Woods, but they had, they had to get another interior pass rusher that lined up that, that or sorry that could line up next to Quinton Williams and potentially have a lot of success can do can, can win one-on-one -on -one matchups can do some of the dirty work his success isn't solely reliant on what Quinton is doing next to him right because I mean look anybody if you have a dominant uh interior d, d tackle and he is just commanding double teams he's you know forcing the running back to come down and block him it really makes the other defensive tackles job a lot easier. So ideally, you would want somebody there who poses somewhat of a threat to where it's now like, okay, double trouble coming from the inside. Not to mention we have all the, you know, talented edge rushers on the outside quickly to go through and Will McDonald, Jermaine Johnson, Carl Lawson, Bryce Huff, Michael Clemens, a lot of players there. A lot of pass rushers. Okay, this system is built off getting after the passer. If you can't do that, it's going to be these Sundays are going to be long days, right? You have to be able to sack the quarterback. And again, Quinn Jefferson coming off the best season of his career can do that, right? Let's take a look at his stats. He played in 17 games with only three starts. Now, I, I know hearing that could be a little like shell shocking, like uh, three starts, like what's going on here? But check out these numbers, five and a half sacks, 29 tackles, 13 quarterback hits, and 43 total pressures. So yes, rotate veteran rotational piece for Seattle, but when you look at Jefferson from a pass rushing standpoint, this guy had one of the better interior pass rushing seasons in the entire NFL last year. That's not a stretch to say. Keep in mind, we signed him for a one-year contract worth up to just over $3 million, 2.75 guaranteed. So I know he's not the biggest name out there, right? He's not some franchise cornerstone. He's not like a DeForest Buckner. He's not an Aaron Donald. He's not a Quinn and Williams. He's not a Dexter Lawrence. But pound for pound, last season, he was one of the best interior pass rushers. When we look at like pass rush win rate and stuff like that. Um, now, there is a downside here. The downside is he's not that effective against the run. Right. And that's also, you know, a super important quality, obviously, of a defense, especially if we're trying to make a Super Bowl push here. Do we have a run stopper? Jefferson eh, doesn't really check that box. But again, the Jets brought in Al Woods. OK, so I think because of these, you know, two players, just these sole two defensive linemen two veterans here coming over from Seattle, I think it's going to make all the difference in the world on this defensive line. I mean, we all know this. If you have, you know, one position on the D-line uh, that's a liability, 
things could get rough, right? If you, I mean, because think about it. Like an OC can just keep running the football your way. In the passing game, you can slide protection away from that player with the full confidence that you know even in a one-on-one matchup, there's no chance of that guy getting to the quarterback, um, you know, thus putting more protection on the other, uh, you know, question marks, uh, other concerns of the defensive line. So with the addition of Quentin Jefferson and also Al Woods, I think it was such a nice pivot by Joe Douglas to go from Sheldon Rankins, a guy who had, you know, I, in my opinion, a solid season for the Jets last year, a better year two with the Jets than he did in year one, uh, to lose a guy like that. I was a little disappointed. I thought like, yeah, he was probably going to come back. But then when I saw uh, what he signed for, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a bit understandable to quickly pivot and go with Jefferson and, and Al Woods here and signing those guys to, ch- to, to two cheap contracts, I mean, it's huge. Now, the thing that I want to end off on is this. In my opinion, the Jets have a better defensive line than the Seattle Seahawks. Okay, so I believe my theory is that because... Again, Jefferson is not a franchise cornerstone. It's not like the Jets are going to be asking, you know, hey, can you play 90% of the snaps or anything like that? Because he's going to be in a limited role, because he's going to be lining up next to highly talented players, and he's going to be on a deep defensive line, so he's never going to be in a position where he's going to be taxed, uh, tired, exhausted, having to, you know, get after the quarterback or, you know, fulfill what he's asked to do. I think because of this situation, we could even see the numbers tick up to a certain de- uh, to a certain degree because of the talent around him. I, I believe it's just a uh, it's the perfect you know ecosystem for a defensive tackle to have success. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I would love to hear your take on Quentin Jefferson. And of course, who's your favorite free agency signing that the Jets have made so far? Um, I'm expecting the Jets to at least make one or two more, uh, probably before... You know, I don't want to say before training camp, but before, you know, the start of the NFL season. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.